use that thing. That master cylinder feels like it's got fluid pressure. Yeah, it don't look bad, and, and for some reason the mice didn't build a nest. A situation like this where everything looks so good, and then you get a giant hole right there in between studs. So it is Monday and it's definitely acting like a Monday because everything is a mess. Shipper gave me about a 30 minutes heads up and we have a guy coming to pick up a truck in 30 minutes and I'm supposed to deliver a truck. It's hectic. And Shane got the breezeway cleared out here. Keep turning my head because we're waiting for this guy to come around a corner like any minute with this uh, yellow cab over to the GMC four, four wheel drive. It's the second one I've ever had. It's got that military bed on it. This is the one that uh, got stranded in California. The first shipper picked it up. It was too heavy for him. Took me like probably 14 hours to get it somewhere dropped in Salinas. Um, was able to get it dropped at a, a new friend's place, a friend of a friend. Gamma Compost picked it up or let us drop it at his place. And um, he held on to it for me through the holiday, through Thanksgiving holiday, and then was able to help me get it put on this shipper here. So we'll see what we got. I'm excited. I know this truck has a little bit of rust in it, but apparently it ran when it was parked like a couple of years ago. Um, so we'll see. The big yellow 39 GMC four wheel drive cab over. It's a really special truck because it's a 40. Actually, I keep calling it a 39. It's not. My last one was a 39. It's a 42, so this is like a war bride. Um, we'll confirm by the VIN number, but the seller's telling me it's a 42. All of these trucks were built for military. Um, hopefully all the four-wheel drive stuff is on this one. The last one I had was missing like a front drive shaft and stuff, so hopefully it's all there. We might be able to actually test the four-wheel drive on this one. That would be neat. The last one we couldn't do anything with. It was missing everything I needed to make the four-wheel drive work. I think the center section of the front axle was out of it. Um, so that's it. It's cold here. It's not freezing. It's not like a full-on winter day, but it's, it's, it's chilly. What is it, like 38, 40? It ain't that thick, but there's definitely at least probably 1,500 pounds of bed there. I'm getting pulled over. Well, we're just doing a level one inspection. Um, what is that thing? I get pulled over 10, 15 times a day. I go into a way station, they red light me on the scale and come out and look at it and I got 700 trucks behind me waiting across the scale all the way I'd stop at a rest area to go piss and somebody to come up can I get a picture of it with you standing beside it as soon as I get done with it bitch <laughs> they would come racing up beside me slow down yeah take pictures taking pictures and shit. so yeah I got the seller gave me a perfect perfect mint condition matched pair of 42 um, California black plates which are like really expensive. So I got your check here for you. Okay. Did it roll up here for you though? Yeah. It okay. Cool. Up. Good. Good. 
That's the original bumper guard, the original cow bumper for this. That's what they all had. That's what the last one was missing. That's what it's supposed to have. There's only one piece broke off of it on the other side, but that's what's supposed to be on it. So we'll put that back on it. The size of the chain. Everything on this truck is so heavy duty. Except that little dinky hitch. Somebody's pulling like a yard trailer with that. That saddle tank's wrong. So it's had some additions over the years. This is the door that I knew had rust in it. But this should be a 248. Hopefully all the Black Widows died. One wrong seat, one right seat. Unfortunately, the driver's wrong. Somebody got a Camaro seat in there or something. Oh, this is nice. Look, these have the original locks in them still. Grill bars are all nice. Yeah, so that cow bumper bolts here and here. And that's original to the truck. And this one should be the one that this should be a radiator fill that's why this one's fixing it making it run and drive and sell it all right we're good yeah we gotta move this dumpster too i get the whole bed of my all right so we're all done it's getting to be the end of the day here um better than expected for sure i thought this truck was going to be in worse shape it's a 42. I've been calling it a 39 because that's what I last had. This body style ran from probably 39 to 40, I don't know, 40. It's, it's hard because you ran into wartime, 45. All the four wheel drive parts are in it. Everything worked out well with the shipper, which was good. This truck was starting to feel like it was cursed and it didn't want to leave California because we had a hell of a time getting it out of the state. Title's good. I got a matching black, perfect mint condition set of California black 42 plates with it, which is awesome, but it's real solid. Like this is the hard part to make on a cab over. So all the floor pans are in it. The dog house is there, all the original controls. We don't know if the motor turns yet. I was told that it does. That doesn't mean that it does. Hopefully we can get some of that yellow off. I'm hoping we can strip almost all that yellow off and get back to this like olive green that's underneath this yellow. Somebody wanted to make this look like a Tonka truck on the side of the road, but we want to try and get it down to that green right there. Kind of the color of that bed actually. So the bed's definitely going to come off um, because it is just too heavy right now. It's, it makes it very difficult to ship it because of what it weighs. It weighs 8,000 pounds the way it is, which is just tough for shipping. The way we ship cars on hot shots and stuff, like it won't be a bother on like the Max D trailer or anything if I have to deliver it, but it's probably going to go overseas. So we want to make it as light and small as possible. So what we're going to do is remove that bed, take the outside duels off, put the, the outside duels up on, and then it's nice and skinny and we should shed at least 1,500 pounds. But that's it, it's gonna be a normal process. I'm real excited to see if it runs and if it'll drive. Maybe the four wheel drive will work, which will be cool. That's it, we'll be able to get that in there. We're a little backed up in the shop right now, but we should be able to get it in there pretty soon. And stay tuned, I think it'll be a good one. You're not gonna see a lot of these. Uh, this is the second one I've ever had. I know of one more sitting in Montana. Definitely a rare, rare truck to have. So, hope you guys enjoy the video. Several days later. Today's the day we're going to get this big old cab over into the shop. 
we're gonna get that bed off of that thing today. Kind of be good to go to start working on it. I'm gonna help Joe with some of the heavier lifting on it. That's it. The yard's really tight right now because I have this big blue container like moved out. I don't know how I'm gonna get this thing going the right way into the garage yet. So we're just gonna give it a good old college try and I'll let it rip and if we break something, we break something. check the whole thing out real quick. Sam, can you pull that door down, please? I think that's a guide plate in the front because this used to be a dump body. Well, this is this looks like it's welded solid, though, doesn't it? Well, see, that's what, it's an old dump body. See the hole? That's what the pin used to go through. I think that, that bolted plate's the only thing holding that bed on. This bed didn't belong on this truck. Somebody just set it on here. You see what this was? It's like a personnel truck. Just that kick up seats. Seats, yeah. I gotta get up in there and get that out. That belongs on the front of this and we have to put it back on. That only came on these, the military grill, who they had make those things, but they're all supposed to have them. To get this over top of these, I guess I'm just gonna have to pick this up and try and drag it back. I think I'm gonna cut the mud flaps off first and then get some lights up underneath there and see what's holding this bed on. They're gonna get bound up on stuff. So what do you think, that's holding it? That little thin piece of metal, I think is what's holding this bed on, because that front wants to guide. This is a typical dump body guide right here. So the rail, the rail comes down behind it. It's just a guide so the bed's coming down and if it's a little cocked, it'll kick in. But once I cut that, I'll, we'll kind of give it a little test lift with an off-road jack or something. Almost hit me right in the nuts. I'm not torching that plate. I'm just gonna rip straight across that plate because I know that that's what's partially holding this thing on. That was definitely holding the bed on. I don't see anything else. Hey, this thing I think is loose. It has to come straight up. But yeah, I think the move is the excavator, so I'm gonna go get that warmed up. All right. I don't want to cut off all those other tabs. It ain't going to slide back. It's got to come straight up. So I'm just going to chain it with the machine.
use it enough to justify keeping it but days like today it definitely earned its keep oh shit we forgot to bring the machine back to push this some bitch back in This drive shaft's out of phase, that drive shaft's out of phase, and they had the good mechanics working on it. Probably never went fast enough to matter. Maybe not. That drive shaft is beat up. Bad. Yeah. And it, welded. It, yeah, welded and everything else. Wait, is this the future? Safe, safely whiz that because there's nothing in it. When there's varnish in a gas tank, it goes outside immediately because it gives me a migraine. Look at that. That moisture stuck between that tank and the step just ate this thing away. It's almost like what you have. Yeah, this is like a 40s version of an energy absorbing hitch. So when you had a pinnel trailer on and it was real violent, it would pull on this, press this spring, and it was like a little bit of a damper. 
got real lucky on this one. We got an error in all six wheels. Never happens. Might be the only one I ever bought that had error in all six tires. And it rolls and it steers. Very, very, very hard to get. Shame, you could at least use that as a template. No shit, that's, that is cool. So this thing, there was one lock release. Do you see another lock release? Uh, yes. So that was sweet, just saw that. This thing had a lever on the front of it to release that seat, see it? Oh, I do, yeah, it's right there. I wonder if this one goes. Uh, actually, the lever's underneath. It looks like if you pull it, you might be able to take that whole replacement seat with it. Yep. Joe, there's probably a 90s battery in this thing. Why don't you try charging the battery, pal? Yeah. yeah. My grandfather would have tried that. But... So I got to pull his headliner down, which I don't want to, because I'm squeamish for spiders. I threw a bug bomb in here at one point. Already. Did you? Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, we're we first... we've had so many Black Widows here this 2023. 2024, we're trying for no Black Widow, so we're bug bombing everything when it comes in. Winter time, you should be okay, but still. I don't think this... Oh, yeah, look at that. That didn't release that seat. There you oh. go. Come on, baby. There we go. Ooh, what is this? We have a gift already. Tail light. Lame. Because no car guys hide their money in their vehicles. The vehicle already ate the money one way or another. Like a little boot rest for the accelerator. I think. It's my it's my guess. Done anything in a real long time. Too early to call it. What we got here? Oh, the grab handles for the outside of the cab. Handles it looks like pieces of leaf spring. Which we definitely don't need. I know Joe hates light bars, but why don't you pop up out of here? I'm going to rip this headliner down real quick. I get attacked by a California tarantula. Worst nightmare. There she is. Doesn't look big enough to be a 302. It's probably a 248. Yeah, I think these are on a key, maybe. Or is that a, is that That's a, a flathead? Flathead. I've had them where they go in on an angle and lock in. So that floor panel come out on your side, but we gotta take the linkages apart. So we're gonna wait until Joe says do that. We're gonna get the shop back. Clutch feels good. Yo, that master cylinder feels like it's got fluid pressure. I mean, that brake pedal's returning. I actually hear air. That would be something. Might be the first old car I ever bought that had brakes, if that's the case. Unless this is air brakes, which I doubt it for the year. Eh, you know what? It might. That's gonna come off. You think it will? Oh, yeah. I didn't think that would come off of there just because of the way they had those arms. I wonder why somebody cut that piece of wood in there. Only one reason somebody would do that, that looks like for an extra battery. Well, let's pull the dipstick. Brony. Brony is bad, yeah. Well, if it turns, that's the first thing we'll do is change the oil. I tell you what, you had to be a real man to drive this thing. Can you imagine going home? You'd have to kill your wife and kick the dog every night. Notice anything strange besides the 12 volt yet? Uh, no, it's got a late model coil on it, though. It's got a blue coil, like maybe this was changed over to 12 volts it's got a high beam switch too oh they had that they did oh yeah yeah they had that back in the 30s okay somebody added turn signals to it yeah titled as a 42 vins is 42. well the only way we're going to see if it turns is that we get underneath take the pan off the clutch and see if the flywheel turns he was pretty adamant about this thing turning oh. well let's see what happened it's moving. Wow. Well, let's take it around a complete revolution. Everything looks really clean in there, too. Yeah, it don't look bad, and, and for some reason the mice didn't build a nest. Uh, no. The flywheel looks good. It's, all, it's so nice and clean on the back. A little bit wet with oil, but there's no rust in it. All right, we're good. 
good. Hopefully that starter's good. We'll have to do the carburetor from underneath here. Your favorite? Yeah. That really sucks. It'd be so cool if this four-wheel drive worked. I don't see why it wouldn't, Pete. It's all mechanical. Yeah, yeah look, all the linkage is connected. Some guys tell me they call this a brownie. Or maybe a brownie's that gear reduction box that we had on that other one. Uh-oh, it won't pass inspection, look. <laughs> we'll probably need to take that off. All right, so as you saw, very, very good news. The motor looked awesome from underneath, and it turns. It did a whole revolution, and it just looks great underneath as far as rust and mouse nests and corrosion. It looks awesome. And then Joe got up here to investigate the top and just look at some things, and he notices that giant hole on the side of that cylinder head, which I have never, ever, ever seen a situation like this where everything looks so good, and then you get a giant hole right there in between studs. It's like... That didn't happen from pressure. That happened from likely like a water freeze, but I don't understand that because I was told this truck ran and drove about eight years ago. I believe that, especially because of the age of the battery. Battery in this truck is not that old. And it was in Salinas, California. It doesn't get below freezing there. How did that happen? I don't know. Joe couldn't really call it either. Where was this truck before it ended up in California? Did I get lied to about when the last time it, ro it drove or... You know, I don't know, but it's not the end of the world because we know the lower end is at least turning. Getting this cylinder head off is not that big of a job. We've done them before, not a huge deal. The big problem here is this is a 248. If this was a Chevy, I wouldn't even care because there's six or seven cylinder heads for a six cylinder Chevy here. Unfortunately, a 235 head is not going to fit on this 248. We're going to rummage around here today, see if I don't have a 248 sitting somewhere. There's engine parts everywhere. Like I can see potential cylinder. There are cylinder heads up on all the way on the top of that pallet rack over there. There's cylinder heads on the second row of the pallet rack. There's a couple cylinder heads upstairs and there's probably six in the driveway. And I think there's even some across the street in the shipping container. Okay. Hey, these lights are in my uh, Amazon storefront, by the way. If you follow the link to my Amazon storefront, Safer lights in there. I'm gonna clean this joint out. Oh yeah, look, when did that come to light? U.S. So it's really strange that that let go there. Here's what I'm thinking. Pulling the plugs first of all, take a compression test. And if we got compression, think about getting it started before we tear that head off. He don't want me to break. I think I could braise braise that up with brass where it'll hold water. It's just gonna save so much. Get this brace out of here, put a battery in it, and see if she'll crank for uh, compression. There. There we go. Take that. Thank you. Put it down here. This ran when it parked. Ran when it parked. That's all they know how to say. Well, why'd you park it if it was still running and driving? It was running when it was parked. Yeah, we just used it on a job. Yeah, and that guy got sick and he never came back to work, so we just left it parked. <laughs> yeah. Why do people say that? No kind of mileage on there, huh? And then, and then what? And then they had that noted on the sale card. Spins, big handle here. That's actually the starter button. 
see if you could push that knob down, but be ready to pull it back up if sure. it starts to crank and no. it won't go down? No. It's this cross shaft is rusted into place, I think. That's free, that's free, it's, it's the shaft. Push down on that, see if we can make it crank. Hard, done. Down? Well, yep. All right, I'm gonna get the compression gauge. Let the fun begin. Now, what should I dump Coca-Cola in here? Ready? Okay, go ahead. Okay, 50, go ahead, zero, go ahead, zero, go ahead, zero, go ahead, all right, hold it, barely 30, this ain't looking good, mm -hmm. but we gotta take the valve cover off and see if the valves are moving, they might be stuck. Go ahead. Zero, okay. Now I don't want to kill the battery completely. Valve cover. I got a feeling the valves are stuck. Where's now? Good stuff, good stuff. You look good. Wow. Wow, look how clean that's. That's what I'm saying. That is beautiful. Now, this engine may have been replaced, and they could be hydraulic lifters that are pumped up. It could be, maybe, because there's no sludge in this engine. That, that's really w rare. Give us a little crank, and we'll look at them and see if they're moving. Oh, there you are. Okay. Hmm. You hear that? Yeah. That's what we want to hear in every one. That's telling us that the valve is closed. See, that's good, that's good. This one probably on. But the hearing that sound is no good, you know, as far as compression's concerned. Bump it around, I want this one up. Go ahead. That's good. This is, this is one of zero cylinders. Go ahead around again. Oh, oh, oh just, just a touch, okay. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Okay, nothing wrong here. So, we have an issue. What is happening inside those cylinders? We need the bore scope to look in here. It's hard to believe that there would be so many with no compression at all. This this one here had, had 50, and then we had one other, the, this was zero, and one of these was 25, almost 30. And I squirted every cylinder with three pumps of oil. Let's see what we look like inside. That new thing, huh? The creeper? Yeah. I think it would be good for you, Joe. I'm not gonna lie, I think this is actually a pretty good one to try on. I could see the cylinder wall. Yeah, oh, okay. It looks like, uh, water and oil mixed there, see? Can't really see the top of the cylinder. This one, the piston's up. But, you know, for all of them to be like that, like why are all of them like that? It's gotta be, there has to be something in common here. Like usually, 
when you've got a zero cylinder, it's only one because the valves are stuck or, or there's a hole in the piston. But to have them have so many, actually four of them are zero. One is 50 and one is 30. It could be that there's debris on the valve seats, maybe. And that debris is causing it not to be able to seal for then the compression to happen. Yeah, exactly. So then that's why you add oil, right? To try and like seed it. So when it but seeds it, it. Yeah, you want that oil suction. around the rings yeah. to make compression because sometimes the rings get stuck in the pistons. Okay. But you'll never, uh, if the piston's going up and down, it's rare to see a zero. You'll see a 25 or a 30, but zero is rare. I think it's, I think it's, it's debris on the valves is what it is. Now the last one that was like this was I tapped the valves with a hammer and as they snapped open and closed that little bit, they seated. The GM, GMC fire truck. We're gonna try that on this. Okay, give me a bump. Some of them have the rings and some of them don't have those rings. These rings. Yeah, those are probably rotators. They help the every time the valve goes up and down, it turns a little bit. It's called a rotator. That's on that looks like that's on the exhaust on these. Okay. And it keeps the exhaust valves from getting burnt, from staying in one place. Okay. There's a lot of crud in the, This looks clean. Yeah. Inside those cylinders, there's crap. It was being lugged, you know, load, lugged down a little low. Where's the compression gauge? Let's try it again. Go ahead, go ahead, give it a crank. Let's try this back one first. Right. All right, whoa, we're, we're, we're 130. Nice. Right. Right. That's up from last time. Yeah. Well, that one's not the problem. That one's been doing good. Yeah, yeah, that one always did have compression. Oh, we got zero Ready? on the middle three here. Go ahead. Okay. All right, see that come up. It, get, it did? Yeah, we're at uh, almost 80. Okay, that's good. That's so good. as long as they're coming up, that means it'll start. Go ahead. Okay, that was zero, now it's 50. Put some Bondo in that crack Ready? head. Go ahead. Okay, that, that was zero and now it's 30. Now wait, I buy you a topside creeper and you're leaning over a little ladder. Pete, there's no room in here for that. Go ahead. Okay, that's uh, 70. No, this front one was zero too. Go ahead. See, they're all up. Yeah, okay. They're up? That's 60, yeah. All right, so they're up. It'll start. Now to get it, Pete, where you at? Look how clean this, these valves are here. There's no sledge in this thing. You're gonna do when, when you look at it with a bore scope, there's a lot of debris in the cylinders, like uh, carbon. Oh, okay. Wet carbon. I think there's dirt on the valves, and they aren't sealing good, but it, it seems to be blowing away. Do you want to see if we'll get it hot and see what happens? Uh, yeah, that's what I want to do. To get it running, though, we're gonna have to take the carburetor off, clean it. Now I got a question, where that head broke, is that a water jacket? Yeah, that's a water jacket. What if we just don't put water in it? Well, yeah, we could do that. Let's yeah. just get it running and then we'll worry about that. That's what I was thinking because the head job is really a big job. It is a big job. I don't wanna take all that stuff off. I'd rather just sell it if there's a hole in the head and I'll try and sell it with a good cylinder head. Uh, the fuel, the whole fuel system is the biggest job. It's got regular points in it and that. That was definitely a freeze crack. I, 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 I have to say so, yeah. That would, there's, there's no other way that happened. The only thing that would do that is water. They put care. water in and then took it someplace cold. Maybe. I mean, regardless, it needs a head. Nobody's going to keep it like that. I say we just get it running. Okay. And I'll let's go, yeah, let's go from there. Yeah. All right. That's a good mix right there. Put the straight 30 in there. Straight 30? How many do you think I should grab? Five. Five? Four. Five. Wow. Somebody get one. That's coming loose today.
Watch out, oil's coming down. Wow. That has the nasties, man. That hasn't been changed in a century. That sludge. You didn't put the filter back in, did you? No. I oh, so. no, no, no. I didn't think so. <laughs> I just thought I'd ask. Yeah, that, uh, that thing would never recover. Next to the drain pan, that's what I'm wondering. Took out the fuel filter, it leaked a little bit more. Okay, that's never going to work. All right, we're going to go with electric fuel pump on this. Electric? Okay. Yeah, that's what we have to do because they got... Uh, Is it stuck in there? No, well, it's not that. There's, they have the oil lines from the oil filter running through one of the studs on the fuel pump, which really makes it difficult. Change, I don't know why. It, see, it's leaking oil right now because I put a quart of oil in the filter as a pre-loop. And uh, now it's, and it looks like it's leaking. You're always better off with the original fuel pump, but let's get the carburetor off and uh, see what we have to do with that. Carburetor. Is that air filter always up that high? Yeah, on these, it's, it, they use tubing to get the air, usually the air filter's on the back of the cab. Yeah, I was gonna say, it goes to a weird spot. It'd be very difficult to service that. All right, we're gonna have to get all that crap off the bottom of the carburetor before we get the top off. And it has what they call a governor on it too. Thing that's over top of where the air gets sucked in? Yeah, all that has to come off. Governor, huh? Do you see any bolts down there? Yeah. There's one there, I, I can see, see that, that clearly. That, that'll be one of the ones. It looks like it's just slipped over top. Uh, no, there's a second one. There's I'm one feeling one it, there. yeah. Yeah, okay, I see it. Yeah, I'll get them from up here. Okay. Test to come off. Yep. There it is. Alright, I got it. Oh yeah, you're right. Alright. This is what Joe just took off. Oh, you see it's almost just like a straight a 90. And that's where it was broken at. That's what we're working with. <laughs> now it's okay. Here, I'm coming. It's loose. There it goes. Alright, I got it. Uh, Alrighty. Let me see if I let the nut go. Alright, I got the nut too. A new set of brushes. The problem was there's an economizer, but this is what was stuck. Is this valve? Now there was something on the bottom of it. I'm thinking it was a just a big flat washer. We gotta wait for that kit. I can't. Right now it's still soaking. I heated it twice. It will not twist. I even got penetrating oil on the back side of it. 
If that comes as an assembly like that, then we don't have to worry about damage in this. So we can drill a hole in it, put a screw in it, sheet metal screw, and pull it out. I'm wasting time until we get the parts. Okay. I tapped it with a tap. It's a little stuck in there, huh? No, it's, it, a valve was underneath this. I got it out and I'm soaking it. You know, if we had our bead blast cabinet warping. gets mounted just like that in what is upside down basically and then this thing has an air cleaner probably somewhere behind that front grill of the tube and the air kind of comes in and goes down and then comes up into the bottom of this thing no right here out on the side okay so can you even call that an updraft yeah still on it's not a side yeah, it's draft. Updraft. updraft so it's still because it's going up okay right we've had some of them on the chevys it's a straight updraft mm -hmm. it's not on the side that's a should be a 248 GMC though. In my experience, those updrafts do not operate at all unless they're rebuilt. Oh, this one never ever would have ran ever. It's all gummed up. Yep. like that to drive this for a living huh you need arms like a like a wrestler to drive it mm -hmm. to steer it plus look at all the coordination you need to shift and double clutch and yeah you know, you're working with 80 horsepower yeah. maybe 85 you have to depend on your gears I'm going to put a wire on this choke. Wire on the choke. There you go. Nice. Yep. That's all we need for now. And then we're going to do another compression test to make sure nothing changed. Okay. And then we're going to start putting plugs in it. Okay, so now we figure 
that's neutral. All right, see if it spins. Oh yeah, that's strong. Okay. Right. Okay. See, that's only at uh, 50. That's about what the other ones were too. Go ahead. Okay. See, we're 110. Okay, go ahead. Okay. See, that one's 125. Let me check his front one again. It was 50. Okay. Yeah, see, we're up to 75, 80. Another one. That's a low one. That's uh, 50. All right. Now I can concentrate on the spark. Okay? Yes, sir. Hey, it ran when I parked it. <laughs> Damn it. Three times do I have to tell you? This keeps that this plastic insulator block to, from wearing, and it keeps the points from jumping. Just a little, and so it was just a little So like they piece. ride around there smoothly instead of hopping. Okay, Ready? see what you got. Did you see that? Yeah, I saw that. Okay, did your camera get that? I think so. Go ahead, try it again. Yes, it did. That was a good spark. Yep. See how that sparked? Yeah. That's telling me that everything's getting juice the way it should. Okay, we're gonna put plugs in it. Then we're gonna start on the fuel pump. Okay. Ah, that one needs a little pinch. Huh. What's our firing order? One five three six two four. Does that sound right? Let's see. One five three six two four. Okay. Got it. Smoke tomorrow. Cause good, I'll, good, good. I'm gonna work on a fuel pump here for a little while. I'll work till three thirty. See, we have to put the bypass filter in. Most of these old carburetors only run on like one and a half PSI pressure. And if you put too much pressure to the carburetor, it'll bypass the needle and seat that shuts the fuel off and it will just keep flooding it. This only lets one PSI, one and a half PSI through, which is all you need to run this vehicle. So what it does is the high pressure goes in here, whatever the carburetor can accept, it bypasses and goes back and returns ba back to the tank. That's why you need both hoses. Chrysler did this. They started this in the 70s. They had so much flooding problems, invented this filter with this bypass so that their cars wouldn't flood when they had too much pressure. And it started over the new gasoline, actually. The new gasoline boils at a lower temperature. I'm not sure of the exact temperatures, but when they come out with the new gas, which was mostly alcohol, we used to have to test it for the phone company. And the way we tested it is they had a beaker with levels in it, and then they could test it how fast that gasoline deteriorated. would put it on top of the pump in the sunlight, and you could actually watch the gasoline evaporate right out of that. All the gas today is formulated for fuel injection, not carburetors. There's no lead in it to lubricate the valves, so the valves burn up if they're not hard in seats. They took the lead out so you, when people drink it, they don't get lead poisoning, right? Yeah, exactly. There we go. All right, and then. Now we're gonna mount the fuel pump and uh, move on.
now he's got that, he's got that new house now. Yeah, it's only a block away from. Alrighty. Moment of truth. I think we're ready. Uh oh. So 42 GMC four wheel drive, we're all done. It's running, it's driving, it's cleaned up, and it's sold. Fella that bought it just wanted to see it run and drive, so here we go. And then this thing is heading up to, I think, Connecticut. But it is sketchy how bad it smells like fuel in here. We got good news and bad news. Good news is it runs. Good news is it drives. Minor itty bitty bad news is there's a reverse lockout on this. It's spring loaded, a little trigger on the side, pulls up some linkage, pulls a keyway out and allows you to push through a spring to get into the gate for reverse. It's not operating. So I can find all four forward gears, but I cannot get reverse. I got the linkage to start moving. It feels like in the transmission, we're still not operating. If we had more time and this thing wasn't already sold, what I would do is pull the top off the transmission, pull the shifter, pull the top off, pull the plug, hose that thing down with blaster, let it all run out nice, move the gears around, clean everything, throw the plug back in it, fill it full of oil, drive it a little bit, probably jack it up, run it through the gears, get everything going, drain it again, refill it full of gear oil, everything will be working good. I know that's a minor issue. I've had it here many, many times. We're just out of time on this one. This one's sold, it needs to get shipped out of here. So we're gonna leave it with run and driving going forward. When the next guy gets it, he can do that. It's a, it's a minor thing. We've done it many, many times. So now I'm gonna get ready to drive this thing across the street and that's it. Here we go. I don't even see the camera, bro. Uh, top right. Oh, uh, okay. What's up? There we go. Take Take five. All right, let's. Oh, yeah, this shift, this transmission is a little bit. Probably turn the fuel on.
that first gear you can probably drag the skid loader with honestly that first gear is incredibly tall i'm surprised it grabbed second that easy i was afraid of overheating it running it first gear all the way up here want to get them rpms a little lower that thing is wild to drive it's probably my cd orientation being a little bit low but like to turn it i was like in a school bus i can't believe guys used to drive these with like crazy weight pulling trailers having to do it in traffic on the road or go fast a really hard shift pattern especially it's a twin stick for the four wheel drive trying to operate and do all that as your job and do it well there's some bad dudes that used to drive these things here we are driving ninety thousand dollar pickup trucks with automatics and massaging seats and and this is what this was a work truck here i can't imagine having to drive this and use it for work and this is just a monstrosity of a cab over too like i'm standing in a bit of a hole but like i'm six foot tall is larger than life in person and so i love the four wheel drive ones cab overs are everywhere four wheel drive cab overs are not everywhere Unfortunately, I've only ever had GMC four-wheel drives. I've missed a couple times now Fords. This four-wheel drive is GMC, all General Motors stuff. A lot of the other ones you see are like Mom and Harrington stuff, almost like an add-on later on. We do have, coming soon, another 42 GMC. It's a 6x6, so super cool. It's also convertible, so it was like a truck built to go through water in the Army. So it literally has the cabs cut here and so are the doors the doors have like a little horseshoe in them and it had a canvas top and it's literally six by six drive and it's probably it had dual tandems on it and it's all six by six wheel drive i say i don't know where it is i bought it i paid for it i bought it off of square body dave in arkansas and uh my shipper robbie hit some ice and took it over a hillside and uh my truck is still on his trailer at a body shop this is going on a couple months now they got into fixing this truck they totaled his truck so we don't really know where our six by six is right now but uh that'll be up next so make sure you watch out for that i really really hope we can get that one running and driving that truck's been sitting outside for an awful long time but i love this four wheel drive stuff everybody seems to get really excited about it we love it. It always sells quick. This one sold before it was even listed. Somebody watched on our Instagram said he had to have it. Same thing with the last one we had. That one was going quick. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys enjoy seeing these things running and driving as much as we do. It's always a good time. Keep an eye out. We got a bunch of videos coming. Come check us out at Carlisle. We're going to have a ton of stuff going to Carlisle. That's only two weeks away. And then we'll be getting out west here at some point. We've got a Jersey trip next week. We're going to bring back another cab over. It's a uh, 48 GMC five window. Nice truck came from out west a while back so that's it see you guys on the next one thanks for watching hey thanks for watching our video we really appreciate it i hope you enjoyed it if you have cars like these in your garage if you have a fastback mustang or convertible impala a nice original paint pickup truck or an old cab over truck and you want to sell it i'd love to try and put a deal together with you you can get a hold of me at 412-335-6100 we pay excellent prices we pay finders fees you know it's no secret we do make a little money on the youtube video so that allows me to pay you know sometimes market value or really good prices for these cars we'd love to come out and drag it out of your barn we'd love to film it we'd love for you to be a part of that whole process so if you have an original paint or an original old fastback Mustang that needs work like these ones I have on my trailer, or if you have an old pickup or again, a convertible Impala cab over truck, whether it doesn't matter where you are, we buy nationwide here in the United States, all the way as far as California. I've had stuff, New Mexico, Arizona, Oregon, Washington, high desert stuff we love. So, or if you're on the East Coast and it's a rusty Mustang or a rusty convertible Impala, that is fine. We typically don't buy many trucks on the East Coast, but I buy a lot of cars on the East Coast. If you have cab over parts also, especially for these early Fords, I'd be interested in that. And never hurts to send me an email or a text ironcitygarage at gmail.com you're welcome to send me an email or a text message probably the best you kind of get an instant answer that way 412-335-6100 i'd love to talk to you hope you enjoyed the video and uh, hopefully we can make a deal on what you guys have on your farms or in your garages